Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. In this playlist, we're going to see how to construct a uh, metric space from a pseudo metric space. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to discuss uh, the theory of equivalence classes, uh, which is very nice and very basic uh, in set theory, uh, but it's really the foundations for what we're going to do with converting pseudo metric spaces to metric spaces. Okay, so let's say we have some abstract set S. Um, which I will just draw as a box. And this set has some elements in it. A, B, uh, C, D, let's say. And let's say we want to partition this set up. We want to break it into pieces. Um, so we could do that. Uh, and we want the pieces not to intersect. So we want to uh, break it up into bits that if you union them all together, you will get back to your original set. But the bits are, uh, are disjoint, basically, so they have no intersection. Uh, so, for instance, uh, this would be a partition, wouldn't it? So I've split it up into three sets here now. So I've got the set containing A and the set containing B, the set containing just C, and the set containing just D. This, on the other hand, would not be a partition, so let's redraw the set A, B, uh, C, D. And let's say this is a set. Uh, let's say this is another set we're going to use, and this is another set we're going to use. That covers the entire set, it's true. If I union all of these together, I will get the set back again. Uh, but if I intersect two of these, for instance, if I intersect this one over here with the middle one, uh, I get an element in both of them, which is not what you want. You want to split it up into subsets uh, which are disjoint and which union together to make the whole set. That's the concept of a partition. So, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? And the way that you do this is you define what's known as an equivalence relation. So you say that all the things that are in one of these partitions, so one of these sets that makes up the whole set is known as a partition. So this is a partition. And the way that you define these partitions are is that you define which elements are going to be in a partition. And you say that if two elements are in the same partition, then that element is related to the other element. Sometimes you'll also see it written as A is related to B. Okay, so in principle what I need to do is I need to go through every possible t um, pair of elements. So let's say put all the elements along here. A, uh, B, C, D. And I need to define whether they are related to one another. So is A related to A? Is A related to B? Is A related to C? Of course, um, so that's what I need to do. It's a, it's, a, it's a piece of information defined on the Cartesian product of the set with itself, basically. So I need to go through and tell you for every two, um, I didn't want to say twosome, for every um, pair of number, a pair of elements of the set you can take, um, are they related to each other? Okay, uh, and it will depend on the order as well, so uh, you really do need to ask, is B related to A and is A related to B separately? Okay, uh, so uh, what we want to ask is, what properties does this property, uh, does this, um, does this um, object need to have in order to actually be successful, successfully partition up the set in this way that we want to do, rather than produce something like this. Because one of these, this, we could easily draw an equivalence relation for this. So A is going to be related to B, so we can put that in. A is going to be related to A, uh, B is going to be related to A, uh, and then they're not, it's not going to be true that C is related to A, it's not going to be true that D is related to A, it's not going to be true that a is related to C or that D is related to C. So I'm doing the equivalence relation for this one. Uh, but this isn't what we want. So we need to figure out what uh, what properties the equivalence relation needs to have in order to successfully partition up the set in this way. And you can think, of, again, as the entries of this uh, great big table just being ticks uh, for saying that A is related to A and crosses for saying that A is not related to, say, C. OK, uh, so what properties does it need to have? Well, firstly, if A is in a set, then A does need to be related to A. So X, we do want X to be related to X. So that tells us that all the diagonal elements of this table need to be ticks. So that's our first axiom there. Okay, and that's called, uh, this. they've got very fancy names. This is called reflexivity. Um, reflexivity, yes, reflexivity, there we go. Uh, so it's reflexive. X is reflexively um, equivalent to itself. Um, related to itself. 
Okay, uh, so uh, two. Um, we want symmetry. If A is in the same set as B, we want B to be in the same set as A. So we want all of the off-diagonal elements to be the same. So if X is related to Y, uh, then Y should be related um, to um, Y should be related to X. Now uh, the problem is that if we just stop here, then that's perfect for the, this as well. Uh, it's going to satisfy the fact that if x is related to x, uh, well, it's going to satisfy the fact that x is related to x, so for instance, a is going to be related to a. It's also going to satisfy this property here as well, uh, but it's not going to partition up the set. So what axiom is it that we need in order to get an equivalence relation that defines these unique partitions, basically? I.e., if we take the set of all things related to one another, uh, then that form, uh, then, um, Okay, um, how am I going to say this? If we take the set, if we take the set of sets of things that are all related to each other. So um, basically, I want all the things in this partition to be related to one another. I want all the things in this partition to be related to one another. I want all the things in this partition to be related to each other. And I want uh, all of these. Um, let's use some new terminology. These are now going to be called, instead of partitions, they're going to be called equivalence classes. Uh, because another word for relation is to say that x is equivalent to x. Uh, so that's where the um, equivalence classes comes from. Uh, sorry about the um, misspelling there. Uh, this should be a C rather than a T. Equivalence classes. Okay, uh, so... Um, Basically, we want all the equivalence classes to be disjoint. So we want it to be such that um, if um, we want basically that any element of a partition of one of these equivalence classes should necessarily be related um, to every element of the equivalence class. So basically, we want that if A is related to B, so if A is related to B, and let's say there's another element, E, in this equivalence class, and let's say B is related to E, we want that to imply that A is related to E as well. So we basically, that tells us that any element of these equivalents, that's going to give us the property that we want, that any element of an equivalence class is completely related to every other element of the equivalence class. So this final property, well, sorry, this second property is called symmetry, and the final property is called uh, transitivity. Transitivity. Okay, so let's let's explore some properties. Uh, let's explore these properties further and see that they are going to define um, equivalence classes on a set. Okay. So if we have a if we have a set S and we have one of these relations that uh, these equivalence relations. Um, given by the squiggle, uh, that satisfies those axioms that we saw in the previous uh, previous uh, video, then basically what we want to do is we want to define uh, the equivalence classes now. So let's say, uh, let's say there's a little element x, a little element little x in this set, big S, and let's call the equivalence class uh, denoted by E of little, uh, with this subscript little x, uh, which is the equivalence class of little x, equivalence class of little x, and it's going to be exactly what you think it should be. It's going to be all elements, uh, let's say little y, which is an element of s, such that y is related to little x. Okay, and why does that, that well firstly let's see that that's, that's going to be a subset of s, so you're going to go through every single element of s, and you're going to ask, is y related to x? Um, and uh, if it is, then we'll put it in this set with this equivalence class. And basically, what we want to see is, firstly, let's look at the first axiom of this equivalence relation. So that tells us that x is related to x. So firstly, x is an element of its own equivalence class. So that's a nice property. Now, x is related to y, which is um, telling us that... Um, uh, sorry, x, the second property is that if x is related to y, then y is also related to x. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the uh, that if we generate the equivalence class for an, an element little y, let me just put one there, if we generate the equivalence class for an element little y, so let's say we found another little y in the equivalence class of x, then uh, in the equivalence class of y, x little x is going to be an element of equivalence class of of that equivalence class. So if little y is in, the, is in the equivalence class of x, then it implies that x is an element of the equivalence class of y. Okay? 
And then thirdly, transitivity tells us uh, that... Um, Okay, so transitivity tells us that if x is related to y and y is related to z, then that implies that x is related to um, z. So, basically, that tells us that any element, uh, if y is, a, is, is equivalent to z, that tells us that z is an element of the equivalence class of y. So you take any element of the equivalence class of z, uh, and uh, basically this tells you that it will also be in the equivalence class of y, it implies uh, that uh, Z is also an element of the equivalence class of X, sorry, uh, providing um, X is related to Y. Okay, uh, so basically what I want to use these axioms to do is show you that anything in the equivalence class of X, so if I take any element that's say uh, little y in the equivalence class of X, then um, Y is going to be related to every other element. Basically, what I want to show you is that the equivalence class of X is the same as the equivalence class of any other element in here. Okay.